Hi, so today in this video, I'm going to do a review of a job profile in a big four consulting firm. And this role is uh, with uh, KPMG in the UK. And this role is a fairly senior role, which is uh, a senior manager role uh, in the model risk management and analytics team. So we're going to see uh, as to what the requirements are and uh, what do these consulting firm expect? What is the you know kind of work that they, they do, and how is it uh, you know different from the roles uh, you find in uh, in the banking world, right? So I'm going to talk about all of this. Um, so let's start with uh, you know the, the, they always start with a bit bit of background about uh, you know KPMG as a company. You know, KPMG is a big for consulting firm. It's one of the leading consulting firm in the world. They're more into audit, but they do have advisory departments, and uh, this comes under in the uh, advisory department. And each uh, big for consulting firm, whether it's UI, Deloitte, or PwC, has uh, risk advisory <coughs> department, and they do consulting uh, in the risk modeling area. Uh, right in London, I think three out of the four uh, big four consulting firms are headquartered in in London. KPMG is not headquartered in London, by the way. Uh, KPMG is headquartered in Amsterdam, in in the Netherlands, Amstelveen, to be exact, which is a uh, town next to Amsterdam, and they are headquartered over there. Uh, now, in their London's uh, team, they want. Uh, uh, senior managers uh, in the model risk management uh, department right and this is for UK uh, right but the, the KPMG UK team also works for uh, banks outside of the UK uh, I've seen uh, you know KPMG folks in the in the office in London they work for European banks banks from Middle East banks from uh, you know other parts of the world as well um, having said that, a uh, chunk of the work is from the banks located in uh, London or elsewhere in the UK. Alright, and this is a, a role in the model risk management, right? If you are familiar with model risk management, it, it's, uh, um, you know, this is a type of risk uh, management which uh, is there in almost all other risk areas of risk management, whether it's credit risk management or market risk management, operational risk management. In all of these areas, if models are used, internal models are used, then uh, model risk management um, comes into picture. Because model risk management is about quantifying the risk coming from the errors in the model, right? What could be on methodology side, on the data side, on the user side, application implementation, etc., etc. Okay, and in the UK, uh, the regulator PRA has uh, recognized model risk as one of a risk type in itself. Uh, it was for the first time a regulator has uh, recognized model risk as a form of risk. It was not the case a couple of uh, years back. Uh, in fact, uh, for instance, if you're working in model risk within credit risk, you will still be considered as somebody working in credit risk, right? So that has changed, at least in the UK it has changed because the regulator has now um, ha now uh, recognized uh, model risk as a specific form of risk. Uh, and that can happen in any other uh, sort of uh, risk areas. Uh, anywhere you use model, there is an involvement of uh, model risk. And this role is exactly for that. And because of this changes, right? Uh, I think uh, the the big four consulting firms are expecting a lot of these uh, lot of work from these uh, company because there will be new requirements um, for these uh, banks in the UK that they need to comply with the the new the more modified uh, version of model risk management. Uh, earlier, though, it was not recognized as uh, a separate form of risk, but now it is. So there will be more work. And whenever there is more work from the banks, big for consulting firms uh, get a lion's share of that and uh, and get benefited. And that's exactly the reason why they're hiring people. Uh, now, this SS123, I think I was reading the details uh, in the Bank of England uh, website. You know, this is SS123. I think uh, these are uh, regulatory requirements on the model risk area and what are the things that, uh, you know, uh, all the banks, uh, 
but also investment firms, not just the banks, but uh, any firm uh, that is using internal model for risk management purpose has to comply with these requirements, this new requirements set out by the Bank of England, which is the regulator in the UK for banking and financial services. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's a bit about uh, their team and uh, what you are expected to do and the different uh, kind of work they do in the team. Um, you'll be uh, reporting to either uh, the junior partners or partners directly maybe or even directors in some cases in some uh, places uh, but it's a fairly senior role that means you will be uh, a manager managing a team um, i also know that in some uh, big four companies even at senior manager level you don't manage a team but but i think in most cases you will you will be managing a team so this is a fairly senior role and they expect you to have this experience uh, before they hire you so you should already have the experience of managing a team and it's a very delivery focused role so it's not just about people management you will be also looking after uh, delivery of work doing quality assurance planning for the work and uh, you know uh, being an expert in in methodology in in uh, you know ensuring that the document standard is good so all that is required from you all right, so what skills are needed? You must have understanding of SS-123. It's new, so nobody will expect you to be an expert. But if you have gone through the guidelines, I think people will expect you to have knowledge on that. Should uh, So they expect you to also have understanding of FRTB and DP-522. So, this, so assume this is a role in the uh, market risk area because FRTB is more to do with market risk and trading risk. So, and... Uh, yeah, you should have understanding of model risk appetite and model model risk appetite statements and the working uh, style in in the front office. So you should have good knowledge of that. You should be um, you should be having some experience with regulatory oversight reporting um, at different level. You know, both at uh, desk level, at uh, office level, but at also at a uh, more uh, global central level. Um, uh, you should have experience with model validation and you should be knowing the best practices in model validation documentation um, they expect you to be uh, an expert in financial modeling and data analytics uh, there is a perception among people that if you are a senior manager you will not be expected to have uh, technical knowledge that's actually untrue uh, especially in big four consulting firms at senior manager level you are expected to be uh, working as a uh, an expert beside your people management work which are beside your sales and, and you know um, pre-sales work you will be also expected to do delivery work and that's exactly where you will be expected to have knowledge strong knowledge of uh, content um, in, whether it's re regulatory uh, knowledge whether it's modeling knowledge uh, even programming knowledge in some instances um, yeah and that's expected from you you should have proficiency in python but also r in sas that means it's a hands-on role that means it's not a role which is just a peop doing people management you will be more hands-on uh, regulatory knowledge super important uh, you should be able to communicate with uh, very senior colleagues from front office from different other departments so having good communication skills stakeholder management skills are super important and then yeah i think it is good it goes without saying that if you are going to be working uh, in big four consulting firm or for that matters any consulting firm you should have good communication skills you should be able to network with people you should be able to you know uh, reach out to people for help when needed you should be able to escalate matters well in time uh, so you should have good networking and influencing skills you know so it's not just by being a quant and being technically savvy but you need to be more than that right and it's very difficult to actually find such people because what i have experienced is that people who are really good in quant stuff they are really good in uh, in modeling they know how to program uh, they know mathematics very well they have strong understanding of regulation 
but they're simply not good uh, at soft skills they do not know how to communicate well they do not want to communicate well in some cases and by the way when i say communication it's not just about your ability to speak in english or write english communication is more than just writing and speaking english although that's one of the many things that is uh, needed in communication but it's more than that right there will be moments uh, which will be very stressful you should have your calmness in those stressed uh, periods um so that's quite important so it's very difficult to find people who have skills in both you know they have good soft skills and good quantitative skills so if you are one of them then this is one big role for you one amazing role for you um all right how about to remuneration all that is not mentioned here i think in most uh, uk banks uh, even in consulting firms they don't mention the remuneration but if you ask the hiring guy right the consultant i think uh, you will um, yeah you will um, get to know about uh, the compensation so far i know i think 2 years back uh, i was talking to a guy uh, who is a head hunter for big four consulting firms i think you could expect a remuneration anywhere between uh, 120 to 150 thousand uh, um uh, pound in the uk which as a base salary by the way which is not bad it's quite quite decent on top of that you will have bonus could be between 10 to 30% uh but on average is about 120 140 in that range uh, average uh, base salary and then on top of that you have bonuses all right so this is what i wanted to discuss any question on that uh, let me know in the comment section see you next time